University is a very memorable time in many people's lives for several reasons. Uh, and those can be positive, but they can be very negative. And today we're going to explore those instances where it can be quite difficult and what you might be able to do to make it easier uh, while you explore yourself and explore your interests and build yourself into uh, a professional or, or an academic that you might want to be through the end of your course. Hi, my name is Marius. I'm an honorary assistant psychologist at the private therapy clinic in Harley Street, London. If you'd like to follow me, my social media links are in the description below. Certain types of mental health problems can be particularly prevalent during university times for several reasons. It's a specific development time for people growing into adulthood, starting to take on more responsibility in your life, more strict deadlines and responsibilities in an academic sense, juggling your own finances, getting a part-time job whilst you're studying. Many people need to do that. Juggling relationships. It is just a very intense experience to be going through when you are still relatively young. So it's no surprise that many mental health issues uh, begin to flare at university. So those can be depression and anxiety. Uh, it can be eating disorders if you are prone to those. It can be social issues. You're having loneliness. It's quite common also. So we're going to explore how you might be able to create some structure, reflection and seek the right type of help if you need it. So you can get the most out of your university experience. One realm of issues is around socialising or social issues. So loneliness falls into this area and it's kind of strange because you're probably surrounded by people you'll see frequently, your classmates, your housemates. Uh, you might actually be seeing more people than you did when you were at home or at college, whatever your situation was before. But it is quite a particular situation in that they are all entirely new people. They are all from different parts of the world, potentially, or at least different parts of the country, all doing different things, different ambitions. There's an element of competition. There's uh, who's going to be most popular. Socializing in a dating sense can also be very competitive. People are young. They are going out a lot at university. They're drinking and all this kind of stuff is a perfect storm for insecurities around that, potentially rivalries, um, infatuations, uh, and other things that might be very confusing if you've uh, not learnt to, to cope with those experiences, um, and perhaps if you haven't developed uh, emotionally yet. And of course that will come with the experiences, um, but that doesn't make them any easier when you're going through them, and certainly there are ways for you to make those easier for yourself. So when it comes to improving your experience from a social element, you really want to be experimental in your approach. You want to be open-minded as to which groups you're going to fall into, which you get on with, uh, and you might be quite tempted to go into similar patterns that you had before university. So if you were always into sports, you may fall back into joining those clubs. And there's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely, there's a very easy gateway to start meeting people again. Um, you might fall into the trap of only hanging out with people who are like you, either they're from the same part of the country from you, or if you're from a different country than the one that you, you're at university in, then you may gravitate to more as people who are from the country you're from. Again, also fine but shouldn't be a crux in the sense of the only thing that you can do or kind of a safety net that you always default to. This is a time for potentially reinventing yourself if that's what you want, or at least part of yourself. You don't need to completely change, of course. There's no, no requirement for that. But if you ever wanted to see, oh, could I be the type of person who socializes more? Could I be the type of person who joins a dance group at a beginner's level and works my way up. I've always thought about doing that. Uh, or an acting class. These are all opportunities that you really can take now. And they're all opportunities for you to meet people who are like-minded on the same level as you and potentially forge some new friendships, which might last for a very long time. Now that might all seem a bit intense at first. If you are someone who suffers with social anxiety, you may want to take much smaller steps. So for example, if you're very intimidated by a club environment, and of course, if you're a fresher, uh, or even if you're not, the, the kind of nightlife element of university is an important one in most places. And so it might be really intimidating for you to engage in that kind of lifestyle. But you might instead want to just go to pubs or you just might want to speak with your classmates at first and then go to coffee, go to lunch with them, and then kind of build up into the, the other areas that you might want to develop into. One thing to know about the social element is that, yes, you are keeping yourself open to experiences and meeting new people and creating new friendships, but make sure that you are also setting up boundaries that are keeping you 
safe in the sense that people are not mistreating you, people are not taking advantage of you. That can, of course, happen when people are trying to open up, that they might attract personality types that are going to take advantage of that. So when it comes to that, you very much want to take the view that people who are trustworthy are people who are happy when good things are happening to you and they are also available and empathic when things are not going well for you. Now, depending on how deep your relationship is at that time, it may or may not be appropriate for you to be sharing loads and loads about what's good or bad about your life. And so that's something for you to think about, for you to decide when it's okay to start opening up in that way. And of course, you should see them do the same when you start to develop a deeper friendship. If you're feeling lonely, that might feel a bit strange because you might be around people a lot, but you still might have that sense of loneliness. And that mostly speaks to the depth of connection. You can have one deep connection with someone and never feel lonely. You can have a hundred connections that are very shallow and feel lonely all the time. So you might want to explore what that means to you. What does it mean to you to have a deep friendship or a deep connection with someone? And Put yourself in situations where you're more likely to meet people like that and dedicate your energy to people who are going to be able to engage on that level with you. Now, again, experimentation is great. Stay open, but be conscious of what's important to you. What does it mean to have an important element to your relationship? Is it trust? Is it openness? A lot of these things are common among all of us, but do some soul searching if you are feeling lonely and try and seek out those connections. And also don't just look within your university. You may be in an area, a city, where there are more people, more groups of people that you might be able to meet through shared interests or hobbies. You might want to not limit yourself as just a university student who hangs out with other university students. You're a person who lives in a town or a city and there are many ways to meet people. So explore that if you continue to feel lonely at university and can't quite find your tribe there. Next, we're gonna talk about structure. It's very easy for mental health issues to snowball when you don't have structure in your life. And that means having a schedule, waking up at roughly the same time every day. That's not a very common trait or that you might expect from a university student, especially with all the, the nightlife or you know just socializing that is very normal to do. Um, you, that might throw you off every so often. And that's okay, but it's not as okay for you to never have a reg regular schedule or to always sleep in if you don't have a morning lecture. You should wake up for yourself. You should wake up to do things that are going to set you up well for the day. Have a healthy breakfast, do some journaling if you're interested in that, go for a walk. Anything that is slow paced, gonna get you into the mood warmed up for the day and then you can start being a bit more productive. Walk onto campus and just sit in the library, get yourself a coffee. You don't need to immediately jump into work, but having a rhythm and say, you know, I always get up at 9 a.m. and by 9.30 I've left the house and I, I do my walk to the university and sit down in the library, pick up an espresso or whatever you fancy um, and then you're there, once you're on campus, that's, that's a great start and you, you, you're more likely to get stuff done if you're out there. If you're laying in bed until you feel like getting up, you're much less likely to start your day off on the right foot and doing that regularly can really be bad for your confidence. This is not all about getting work, university work done. It's more about you feeling good and confident in your regularity and if university is important for you, absolutely, in the academic sense, then of course you should be integrating a lot of the studying into uh, all of the things that we're considering here. Um, but really we're focusing on mental health here. So having a strong bedrock of habits is really important. Next I'd say with the routine is to integrate a lot of movement. I say this instead of saying get more exercise because it tends to be a very boring piece of advice to say just get more exercise. Instead, just make it about more movement. And movement seems much less serious than exercise. And that could just mean walking more, sitting in a library all day with your back hunched over or on a computer is not good for your body and your body and your mind are not that separate. They are not separate. And so having a body that is not moving and is sluggish, is lacking energy, is not going to be good for your brain and it's not going to gear you up well to, to study anyway. So to be able to integrate, well, I do my 20 minutes, half an hour, 45 minutes, whatever your sprints are for studying, and then I get up and I walk up and down the stairs in the library or I walk to get my next drink, uh, fill my water bottle. Make sure that you're keeping that momentum. Again, staying in bed for too long in the morning, not good because your body is not getting into a rhythm. 
similar to if you're in the library for hours and hours. It's not as good for you not to be moving. So think of movement as an energizer. And whenever you're feeling lethargic, down, anxious, integrate some movement. Nature is really good for getting uh, some mental space as well. So if you have a park or any sort of greenery around there, a quick visit somewhere like there is going likely to do some good. I would suggest also for many people who haven't explicitly learned how to learn, meaning techniques that are good for learning, stuff like the Pomodoro technique, spaced repetition, Anki cards or flashcards. These are all things that are going to help you actually do studying well. Uh, and unfortunately not everyone is taught the scientifically proven methods of learning well. And so if you can start to build that foundation of I know how to work rather than highlighting passages, which is not a very uh, effective way of studying or reading something over and over again, which is also not that effective, rewatching lectures on its own at least is not that effective. Go with what works for, well for you. But there are some scientifically proven ways to study well. Um, and YouTube is actually an excellent resource for that. So productivity and study YouTubers are very popular. Uh, there's lots of them. Um, so just do a quick search on study techniques on YouTube and you'll be well on your way. Finally, I'd say connect a bit more with your purpose. Why are you at university? What does this moment in your life mean to you? It might seem completely meaningless for now, but you decided to go to university for a reason and you're there now and you have a choice. You have a choice to stay. You'd also have a choice to go. And I'm not saying that I'm suggesting that that, that would be correct, um, but putting yourself in the center of your own life and saying, actually, I'm the one who decides what I'm going to do with myself. So I know I'm here. I'm going to take control of what's happening. I'm going to put all these checks in place to make sure that I'm doing the right things every day, the habits, um, the meaningful connections in my life to make sure I feel grounded and safe. Um, and I'm also going to set myself up for the future that I want. And that doesn't always mean that you're going to get the top grade. Some people that's super important because of the type of job they want to get or just as a personal achievement. But for you, it might mean making excellent memories, getting ready to get out there in the world. Maybe you want to start your own business. Maybe you want to work for a specific company or in a specific area that's, that's about to change the world. Those are all exciting things. Maybe for you, this is just a time that you're going to spend being young and enjoying yourself, but after you want to settle down and get a family and you have, you want to get a job that's actually not related to your degree. All of these options are self-awareness. They're very good for you to be aware of why you're there. Not so much to dwell on them, but to decide, right, well, I've decided to sit this through. I've decided I want, I'm here for the grades or I'm here for the memories. And I'm going to design my life, design my habits on a daily, weekly and longer basis to make sure that I'm getting closer and closer to that ideal version of myself. Remember, university is tumultuous for a lot of people. It's difficult. There's a lot of emotional and physical changes still happening to you, and that's okay. Always feel free to reach out. Your university will have their own counseling service, which should be free, and you should be able to see, be seen there a lot faster than you would, for example, on a, a national health service like here in the UK. You could also go private, like at the private therapy clinic. So if that's an option for you, do reach out to us. Our links are in the description box below. And you're not alone, so remember that. If it is getting too much, reach out for help. Thank you for watching and look after yourself.